Well, it appears that we've all had a bit more time at home lately. I've had a few people hit me up saying, hey, did you watch the platform? Did you watch Ozark? Uh, no. No, I haven't. Well, if you haven't been watching the platform or Ozark, what have you been watching? Turns out I've been watching a lot of shit. Lots and lots of shit that I'm never gonna review. So I thought, oh hey, how about I take all that shit, throw it into one video. Let's call it, uh, what you been watching. A rapid fire rundown. Documentaries. Obviously, I watch Tiger King. And I think it's absolutely insane. You got twists and turns and more footage than you could ever ask for. And all craziness aside, it's very, very well made. The way that they take information and feed it to you is brilliant. There's at least three times per episode that you're like, wait, what? If there's some chance you haven't watched it yet, do it. It's entertainment in its purest form. Carol Baskin, fucking bitch. I am never gonna financially recover from this. LA Originals, this documentary covers Esteban Oriel and Mr. Cartoon. Two Latino best friends, one's a photographer, one's a street artist turned tattoo artist. These guys rose up amongst Snoop Dogg and other rappers in the 90s. And I thought that this doc was totally rad. It details these two dudes that I had no clue about and it captures the 90s hip hop era perfectly. Check it out, it's good. Beyond the Mat. This documentary is from 1999 and it's about the WWF before it became the WWE and it's about the wrestling lifestyle. I know that it's way past its relevance, but I had a great time just rehashing these memories of the Attitude Era. It's kind of surprising how much smaller The Rock was back then. Ah, uh, good times. The Ronda Rousey story through my father's eyes. Ugh, well, Netflix just kept recommending this and recommending this, and I was like, all right, I'm an MMA fan, I'll check it out. And that was a mistake. It's so cheesy. The voiceover and the script are just awful. The guy that made this documentary had some kind of a weird obsession with Rhonda. He kept calling her beautiful like over and over and over. Just like a fucking creepy dude. Ah, uh, hey man, that's enough. Also, this was released in 2016, so it's covering Rhonda while she was in her prime. You can tell he's pretty much finished making the documentary and then Rhonda lost, so it was kind of just tacked on in the end that she got knocked the fuck out by Holly Holm. He barely touches on that, as well as the horrific fallout that she has with MMA. And then he wraps it all up by calling her beautiful a few more times, and uh, it was bad. Really bad, don't watch it. A little Peep, Everybody's Everything, uh, surprisingly good. I've never heard of Little Peep before. It covers his very short music career and tragic death. It's just a little bit amateur filmmaking, but it kind of works for this documentary since everyone is so young. But overall, I liked it, and now I'm a big Little Peep fan. Coldplay, Head Full of Dreams. Uh, yeah, not my favorite, not very interesting. They have 20 years of footage showing the rise of Coldplay but I feel like they barely show you anything. It's a lot of clips that they just repeat over and over. Weird. So Coldplay didn't really go through the hardships that other bands have, and the timeline for this documentary was just all over the place. They kept talking about these very specific moments in their career, but I didn't know when they were. Just give me like a cohesive timeline, please. Not very good, don't watch it. So I geeked out a little bit and I watched two documentaries on alien movies based on the making of Alien and Aliens. I thought the one about Alien was actually surprisingly boring with some pretty cool moments. Fell asleep twice. And I thought the one about Aliens was actually pretty great. Really enjoyed the one about Aliens and the whole filmmaking process with James Cameron. He's a smart dude. Had a good time with that one. Both documentaries are about three hours long. First one felt like it, second one did not. You kind of have to watch both though. So I'd say it's worth watching the first one to get to the second one. All right, movies, bombshell. Just gonna say it straight up, waste of talent. This movie's about three women that worked at Fox News that went after their boss, Roger Ailes, for sexual harassment. Yeah, that sounds like it would be a good movie. It just isn't. There's just not much script or story to it and a surprising amount of fluff and a obnoxiously surprising amount of characters just looking at each other. It's, it's a lot of this. I just don't recommend Bombshell, it's not good. Honey Boy, this is a movie written by Shia LaBeouf and it's about his life. 
it's very good, but I went into this thinking it was going to be more about his career, and the whole movie turned out to be about his relationship with his dad. It is good. I do recommend it. I just think I need to rewatch it now that I know what to expect. And for the record, I think Shia LaBeouf is like one of the best actors ever. You ever see Fury? <clears throat> and I said, here am I. Send me. <laughs> Call the Conqueror. Yes! If you want some bad Kevin Sorbo 1997 garbage, this is it. It's just an hour and a half of awful acting, awful music, and awful action, and it's fucking hilarious. So bad it's good, and I honestly love every minute of that movie. It's so funny. I mean, come on. Your bride is over 3,000 years old. She said she was 19. I saw Stuber. This movie was recently released on HBO, and I gotta be honest, I laughed my ass off. Dave Batista and Kamal Ninjan... Ninjanji? Ninjan... Shit. Nanjan... Nanjani? Nanjani. Nan... Nanjani? Ah, fuck. These two dudes have fantastic chemistry, and it's a simple, by the book, two strangers that don't get along comedy. Surprisingly simple, surprisingly funny. I think it's a good time. Bumblebee. Somehow I missed this movie. I don't know why I didn't watch it. Let's chalk it up to Transformers fatigue. This is a prequel before all the other Transformers movies and Bumblebee makes a friend and they go on an adventure. And it's probably the second best of all the Transformers movies. Probably the first best. The opening scene of the movie is a motherfucking battle on Cybertron and Optimus Prime is fucking up some Decepticons. That's awesome. Didn't expect that and I loved it. The movie's dope and it has a surprising amount of heart. Big time adolescence. I saw this on Hulu. Uh, I like Pete Davidson so I thought I'd give this a chance. Eh, it's not very good. It's just okay. You really don't have to pay attention to the movie at all to know what's going on. You can be on your phone like the whole time. An older dude becomes friends with a younger dude and sometimes it's funny. I watched the Evangelion Rebuild series. Uh, I just can't get Evangelion out of my fucking head. I'm just always thinking about it and I can't stop. So of course I watched the Rebuild series which is three fucking movies. One and two are like kind of a recap of the TV series and three continues the series and it's all just up for debate. I, I really didn't like the Rebuild series. I'd say watch the Rebuild series or the TV series and just leave it at that. Don't watch both because it's nothing but conflicting shit in your head. Is it a retelling or is it a sequel? I don't know. And it bothers me. Fuck. TV shows. I am not okay with this. I was really into this show. Uh, there's just not enough of it. <coughs> it's a cool concept. It's high school girl discovering that she has telekinetic powers. It's very Carrie. Very Carrie. It's only seven episodes and each episode is like less than 30 minutes. So once the show really gets going, it's already over. Just not enough. Will I watch season two? Fuck yeah. Fleabag. I can't express this enough. I absolutely love Fleabag. Love this show. Love it. The only reason I didn't make a video about it is that I don't think this show should be experienced with any prior knowledge. The less you know, the better it is. Here's what I can say. There's only two seasons and there's no more coming. The creator slash writer of the series said there's no more she has to say. She's done. And I'm cool with that. Most of the other shows I'm watching are still currently going. Dave is very funny. It's got that Larry David Curb Your Enthusiasm type tone to it, except for he's a younger Jewish rapper. Good show. Just started that Bulls documentary series. I'd say so far it's stellar. 
fantastic storytelling. Can't wait for more of that. The rest of the stuff I'm watching is just like weekly shows like The Challenge, love The Challenge, and then my daily shows like America Says or Family Feud, both of which I fucking kill at. I'm awesome at those shows. I think that's it. I've gone over pretty much everything I've been watching. Anything worth making a video about, I've already made a video about, or I'm going to make a video about it. Hopefully you'll take my words and recommendations and apply them wisely. All right, enjoy your time at home. See ya. Subscribe!